Playing scales is not playing jazz. Knowing theory is not playing jazz. Knowing the language is playing jazz. Hey, it's Tim Whalen from Whalen Jazz Lessons. And in this video, I'm going to show you 10 licks that'll put you on that path to becoming more authentic through learning language. And later in the video, I'll show you a very powerful practice technique to help expand things a bit further. Before we dig in, if you're looking to improve your technique and expand your vocabulary, check out my free jazz warm-ups and etudes package. It's a set of four etudes based on four common song forms, and I know it will help you put a lot of the things we're talking about today uh, to practice and bring them to life. Okay, one of the things I'll be doing a lot of in this channel is talking about language. I prefer language over licks, although I did use it in the video. But really what we're learning here is language. It's just like how you would speak a foreign language. You have to learn the syntax and everything that goes along with it. So a lot of what we'll be talking about here is language. So what do I mean by language? To me, I think it's a combination of knowledge along with listening, along with internalizing all of the things that have been happening in this tradition since it started in the 1900s learning language has been happening since the beginning. If you look at every great musician, they learn the language of musicians that came before them. When you're learning a Charlie Parker solo, yes, you could argue you're learning licks, but when you play his vocabulary, you're learning the language of modern jazz. It's the basis of everything we play, basically. This goes for anything you copy from. You're learning language, you're internalizing it. I have a vocabulary of English words I can speak, and they're automatic. It's because I learned the language. Learning to improvise is no different. You can know every scale and chord known in the universe, but that doesn't really mean anything if you don't know the language. The language brings those things to life, and it makes you sound like you're actually playing music, not just running scales and playing chords. One last point I want to make. Don't worry about being original. Don't worry about the fact if you're copying something, you're not going to be an innovator. We're trying to learn how to play here. And every innovator started here. And I will fight to the death with that statement. <laughs> Even Miles Davis, one of the most recognizable sounding artists in history, said himself, in order to learn how to play, you need to learn a bunch of cliches. It takes a long time to sound like yourself. This is about getting stuff under your hands, in your head, in your ear, so it can come out in your playing, however you make it happen. Okay, let's get to it. The goal with each of these is to memorize them on their own and play each of them through all 12 keys. Yes, all 12 keys. Once you've completely internalized them, you'll start to notice that they creep into your playing. Okay, number one is resolution to the third. Be over a major chord or a dominant. One, two, three, four. And we got five, four, two, sharp two, up to the three. It's an enclosure on the third. You hear this all over the music. Um, so I'm going to take this around. One, two, three. the first one in the context of a phrase right there so that's the resolution to the third next one it's another tonic uh major this could be over dominant too but mostly major seven this is kind of a charlie parker phrase um it's five seven one four three is another real nice shape around a major major uh, seventh chord. Okay, 
Number three, just a minor nine arpeggio, uh, but it's a great springboard when you're playing over a minor chord. This could be like the key of C, D minor seven, which is the two chord in the key of C in a two, five, one. Uh, this was also in my 27 steps video. If you want to check out, uh, there's a link. In there. But this is just real, just a simple uh, three, five, seven, nine arpeggio starting on the third. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Now I've got two variations of this because uh, there's some rhythm that's important to, to know with some of this stuff, especially the triplet rhythm um, coming off and off coming off and off beat. <laughs> Say that 50 times in a row. Okay, so it's the same idea as this, but now we're going to we're going to start with the 2 and go up to the 3rd. So it'll be 1 2 3 4. 1 2 3 4. You can really do this on any off beat. I have it written on the end of and the end of 1. So 1 2 3 4 1 Second variation, so part three of this minor nine arpeggio, it's the same idea, but just getting rid of the triplet. So I'm, I'm approaching uh, on the offbeat before, same note, the two going up to the third. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So that's the minor nine arpeggio, that's number three. Now number four, we're gonna go back to a tonic major, kind of a major seven. Um, and also going along with that offbeat triplet pickup into an arpeggio. So we're basically just arpeggiating a major seventh chord, one, three, five, seven. But we're approaching it from the seventh. So we got the first part of it is one, two, three, four, one, two. Okay, and then what we have here, this is just half step rules from the six diminished scale or the bebop scale. One, two, three, four, one. Sounds like jazz to me. back home. What these are also great for, not only just learning language, you're going to build your chops. Every one of those, my fourth and fifth finger are getting a workout, especially like when I'm going on a, into a sharp key. Number five, this is just a tonic minor. Minor six or minor six. It could also be over a minor seven chord. Um, some people call this cry me a river lick. Um, I also think it kind of sounds like careless whisper by, uh, by, uh, what's that wham or whatever. I don't know. Oh yeah. Let's feel that. Anyways. All right. So this is just a tonic minor lick. It's a uh, one. It's. Nine or two, nine, one, five, flat three, two, one. So you got this two, one, five, and then basically a minor triad with the added two. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Let's take that through the circle. One, two, three, four. Okay, 
that's number five. Number six, this is just a little uh, scale run on a minor chord. It could be a minor six, minor major seven, or it could be a minor seven chord. It's just one, two, three, four, five, up the Dorian mode, one, two, three, four, five, and then three, two, one. That's a real nice starting point for a minor phrase, um, and you can build, you know. Just it's a nice springboard or an ending point. So this is one, two, three, four, five, three, two, one, or one, two, flat three. I'm being faithful to the chord. Here we go. One, two, three, four. Next one, number seven. Um, it's the second half of the line. I just added a little, a little bit before it, but really what we're dealing with, it's, it's just a diminished seventh arpeggio starting on the third of a dominant chord, and it gives us a dominant seven flat nine chord. So if we're in the key of C, our two, five, one is D minor seven, G seven, C major. Two, five, one. Now, <clears throat> If we play a dominant seven arpeggio starting on the third of a dominant chord, we get a dominant seven flat nine. B diminished gives us three, five, seven, flat nine of a G seven chord. B diminished seventh over G gives us G seven flat nine. B is the third, D is the fifth, F is the flat seven, A flat is the flat nine. And it resolves nicely down to the fifth of the one. First thing to do is resolve the arpeggio through the circle and resolve down to the fifth of the one chord. So we're gonna go five to one. One, two, three, four, two. If you want to combine it together, we got one, two, three, four. Mm -hmm. You could take this even through the circle, like go down by key by whole step. We'll start with start with D and make our way down. this way make sure you go up a half step because you got you got to get the other six keys so now we'll go to the key of d flat um you could even do this and not resolve to the five you just go That's number seven. Number eight, we're gonna go back to tonic major again. This is another kind of classic bird bebop kind of line. It's just three, one, six, flat six, five. 
again, implementing the diminished sixth scale, or major bebop scale. One, two, three, four. These are also helping with a quick, just a quick aside is doing it through the circle like this and not having to stop and really learning. It teaches you how to connect. As I've said in previous videos, it's all about gaining fluency so you can connect things together. Um, and this is great for that. You know, the reason I can connect these together is because I have them, they're in my, you know, in my being, so to speak. So just keep that in mind. One more tonic major. Uh, this is number nine. Another, uh, this is a real common phrase with a little triplet ornamentation. So we got five, three, four, five, four, three, one. Eighth note, triplet, eighth note. One, two, three, four. It's all in there. Number 10, this is the last one. This is a little altered dominant uh, four note cell, which is a real nice thing to have. Okay, so if we're playing G, it's key of C, five is G7. We're kind of dealing with a G7 altered chord. You know, an altered indicates we got a flat 13, sharp nine, flat nine, sharp 11. This is a phrase, it starts on the flat 13, it's also the flat six, you know, for, there's a natural 13, natural six, but it's a 13 because it's a dominant chord. Flat 13, flat 13, three, sharp nine, flat nine, root. I'm gonna resolve these so they're the second half of the bar, just so you can hear the five to one. And this can resolve to either major or minor. Major. Here we go. One, two, three, four. Mm. back home. So that's all 12. 12? 10. That's all 10. Now, I'm not going to go through all 12 keys with these ideas just because of time, but um, a great way to integrate some of this stuff is to try to find places to plug it into your own vocabulary. You don't have to do a lot. Just find a little scale that you're playing and, and, and put it in. You know, earlier I did this, you know, for the resolution to the third. I started with a bebop scale and I went down to the fifth and then did the line. Okay, that's a great thing to do. Another thing you can do, and I've given you some ideas here, is you can combine these ideas together and string along longer phrases. Like Barry Harris was a big opponent of this, and I, I really think it's important because this will definitely help expand vocabulary. So I'm going to combine number three, number 10, and number two, and it gives us this. One, two, three, four. A nice little two, five, one phrase. Two, three, four. Okay, really nice. Next one, we can combine number one and number eight to give us a little longer tonic major phrase. So number one, and then it goes into number eight. So we get, let's do G. One more, one, 
more. How about G flat? Okay, there's that. Here's another one. We could combine number four and number nine to give us another longer two bar tonic major phrase. So number four is, and then number nine was, so now we got one, two, three, four. It sounds like bird. Okay, this is a longer one. This is a combination of some language in this exercise and then just some stuff not in here and just combining them together into one long two five one phrase so this one combines three one eight and nine and then just some other language pretty nice right okay next we could combine three ten one and eight, along with some other just uh, vocabulary that's not in this exercise. And it can give us a nice uh, combination of a whole bunch of different stuff in a major two, five, one. One, two, three, four. I mean, that's, that's some juicy stuff right there. Two, three, four. You got this nice little. I mean, that could be a that could be number eleven, or it could be number twelve. See, obviously, there's so much more you could do. These are just some ideas. They're not the ideas. They're just some. You got to start somewhere. Okay, the last one. This is just a tonic minor um, way of bringing that into a longer phrase. We got. We got a nice 16th note ornamentation. That's a nice one. Uh, okay, so you get the idea. That's just some stuff you could do to try to take this a little further. The key here is take your time. This is not an overnight thing. Here's a you're going to be doing this the rest of your life. It's never going to end. You're never really going to master it. But that's the beauty. That's the beauty of this. So make sure your mindset is that and not like I don't know all this. I used to be the I don't know all this and that can get really frustrating and counterproductive. Enjoy the journey. And don't worry about how much of this you know or how little of it you know. If you learn one or two of these, it's a success. So just be kind to yourself. Take your time. The key is to do all 12 keys. That is the key. That will make all of this quicker the more you do it. So if you spend time on one of these through all 12 keys, rather than like a few of them and dabbling, you're going to get more out of it. Just take a little bit that's manageable and work your way through it. Okay? So I hope this was helpful for you. Um, if it was, feel free to give a thumbs up. If you'd like to subscribe, that would be so nice. Um, and I just hope uh, you got something out of it. Have a good one and uh, happy practicing.